Thank you for joining me on today's travel segment. I am Nyasha K. Mtizwa. Now, you might have heard of gastronomic tourism or perhaps food or culinary tourism. This refers to trips made to destinations where the local food and beverages are the main motivating factors for travel. As the United Nations World Tourism noted in 2017 report, food tourism has grown remarkably over the last few years to become one of the most dynamic and creative segments of tourism. Implications on the impact of food tourism include positive media coverage for businesses and the country being advertised, as well as increased tourism traffic, as well as increased number of bookings from food tourists. So, as food tourism is a growing tourist attraction, hotels and tour agencies can promote certain cuisines by organizing regular tours focusing solely on food. So perhaps tribal-themed tours, for instance, because let's look at Nigeria. It has over 300 tribes, and it is considered by travel bloggers as one of the most diverse and vibrant culinary cultures in the world. 300 tribes means as many types of culinary practices which can translate to maybe 300 times worth of opportunities to take advantage of this prime asset. Another strategy is to enlist the help of social media influencers, particularly food bloggers. So some bloggers have a massive online following which can contribute to increasing a hotel or a restaurant's publicity. So Social Media Examiner published a social media marketing report in 2016 which shows that 37% of marketers considered visual marketing to be the most significant form of content with blogging following after. Furthermore, social networking sites such as Instagram and Snapchat that are primarily covering visual content such as photos and videos can be considered tools to use in visual marketing. Now another marketing phenomenon to consider are food festivals. So from Lagos Food Festival in Nigeria to the Cape Town Festival of Beer in South Africa, these are unlimited opportunities for all food and travel industry players. For a business, for example, an opportunity to have a stall and advertise or sell your products. Now tourism ministries in Africa are increasingly using festivals to invite tourists to get a unique experience of the country, its culture, and food. One such well-marketed event, if you remember, was Uganda's Rolex Festival. In the East African country, Rolex does not refer to the luxury watch. It does mean time for an egg-filled sandwich. We recently caught up with the founder of the festival, Enid Mirembe, who is a big advocate for food tourism. As the founder of a big festival in Uganda, I would say, Culinary tourism is very important in a way that, one, it identifies a country, given that global destinations are known for their food. Yes, this is where I got the idea from. Culinary tourism is one of the big sectors in, in the world. Apart from culture and wildlife, we also have culinary tourism, whereby global destinations are known for their food. For example, Italy is known for their pasta and pizza. When you go to Europe, they have the wine culture, the Japanese sushi, the Chinese noodles, the Indian biryani are different foods. So we needed something that unites us as a country. And as well, I would have to say that it is also very important to know that culinary tourism has a group of people that it usually employs. When a tourist comes into a country, we have to know that they, they support a whole chain of people in the value distribution chain. For example, the person who is in charge of the flour, the flour factory, then we look at um, the farmer who grows the, 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 who grows the tomatoes and onions and cabbage, and then we look at the person who takes the Rolex to the street to make so there is a whole lot of people involved. The person who raises the chicken for eggs and then the person, the, the final consumer. So a tourist comes, oh, when I go to a store and buy, I'm not only, only, I'm only supporting. At the back of my mind, I have to know that how to package the whole concept of food tourism. You have to know how to help the people who are involved in the business. You have to know how to help the people who are involved in the value chain of a role. And on that enlightening and hunger-striking note, that's the end of travel for this week. Thank you for joining me. I am Nyasha K. Mutizwa. Let's travel together on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, at Nyasha K. Mutizwa. Till next time.